Hi everyone, I'm Paul Amiski. In this video, Matt Hurdle from Of Earth Furniture is going to be joining us. This is part one, this is exciting, of the Bally Chair Build. If you don't know what that is, you'll have to go to the website, but of course we're going to show you some pictures right now. Ooh, ooh, look how nice that chair is. Ooh, yeah. So we're going to show you how to build this video, and you can pre-order templates for this chair right now at 50% off. Uh, you can go down in the description there, we'll have a link to my online store. Hope you enjoy the video. This is part one of four of the Bally Chair. Step one, we've dressed our material to thickness, one and a half inches. We've cut everything to length and squared it all up. We followed the material list which is included with the templates. Maybe you've bought them. Yes, we do sell them. We have an online store. Links below. Now we're going to focus on the front legs. We're going to trace our template onto the blank. We're then going to go over the table saw and trim it to length. So let's go on over to the table saw and do that right now. So we've trimmed the top and bottom of the front legs to length. and We've just matched the angle on the template to the table saw blade. You can also use your miter saw, of course. Next up, we're going to go to the bandsaw, cut away this material, cut away that material. We're going to leave all the material at both joint faces. This piece will then slide into our jig, and we can run this on the table saw to cut those joint faces exactly how we need them. So let's go ahead to the bandsaw, and then we'll be heading over to the table saw. This is the jig that we're going to use at the table saw. The side of it's going to ride on the fence. We're going to take the front leg blank, and right on it we have some lines that we're going to align the top and bottom to. We'll be able to clamp it down with these little, little doodads, and it's going to cut this joint location perfectly, just where we want it. We're going to then take the leg, flip it over. Again, we'll have some registration lines clamp it down with these little doodads, and then we're going to cut this joint location exactly where we need it. So let's head to the table saw. We're going to cut these right now. Why wait? Let's go do it. So next up, we're going to work on the bottom rail. Here's the template. We're going to trace this on our leg blank. And then at the table saw, we're able to cut in here at 1 and 5 eighths from the fence and stop just before the curve, go to the band saw, finish that curve off. Then where this joint location is, we're going to use another jig, get it mounted on there. And at the table saw, we're going to cut that nice and square and exactly where we want it. So let's head over to the band saw and the table saw and get the two bottom rails fabricated. Let's go.
Okay, here we go. Top rails. All you got to do is cut them to size. Instructions are in the material list. So cut them to size already, would you? All right, so next step, we're going to work on the back legs. We have our blank pretty big because we have a good little bend in the leg. So here's your template. We're going to trace it on. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go to the bandsaw, then we're going to cut it out. I like to leave about six inches here at this joint location. You're going to edge sand or disc sand this nice and smooth. We can then register this face on either your sled or your miter gauge at the table saw to cut this. This is 90 degrees. Next joint up here is also going to be cut on the table saw, but it's a compound joint, so it's a little bit more involved. But we're going to get to all three right now. Let's do it. Okay, next up we're going to take the frame components and we're going to be putting in the floating tenons. We're going to do this with the Festool domino. You could do this with the big one or the small one. We're using 8 millimeter dominoes. You can also do this with dowels. You could do this with uh, a tenon that goes all the way through. Lots of different ways that you can do your joinery here. You could do a traditional mortise and tenon if you can figure that out. So, more power to you. We're making money making this furniture, and the Festool Domino lets me do that. Speeds things up and still makes a very, very accurate and strong joint. So, very important. We have three different lengths of dominoes. We have 100 millimeters, we have 30 millimeters, and we have 15 millimeters. And they'll be stacked too high in all the joints. Very, very strong, very accurate. We'll have lots of glue surface. So, uh, Matt's going to go ahead and get that done now. Oh, one more thing. We do have them done vertically. Actually, Matt's done a fantastic job of laying out everything. He already knows his depth. He knows what length of domino is going everywhere. So uh, I always talk about how I'm very visual with my woodworking, and I really like to lay everything out so it's very clear, visible, that you can grab a part, you know what you're going to do to it, and then you can put that part back. Really helps with the whole uh, making mistakes kind of thing. He and I seem to do it every day. I don't know. All right, let's let Matt do some work. Alright, so that's it. That's part one of four of the Bally chair build. Reminder, you can buy templates for this chair and build it your own. We're going to have 50% off until we're done all four parts. That should be in a couple weeks, so link is in the description below if you're interested in doing that. Thanks so much for watching. Any questions at all, please leave them, leave them below. Any suggestions on, on uh, anything really, our, our videos, how to build this chair, or um, you know what the weather's like wherever you are, because here it is cold, it's snowy, and uh, we're extremely happy to be inside the wood shop sharing what we do, what we love to do uh, with you. So 
Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, make it a great one.